In this activity, you are introduced to the session and the login process. A session is a block of server memory that can be used to store and retrieve data that is assigned a unique ID. That ID is then stored into a session cookie and sent to the browser to be stored. Whenever the browser makes a request, the cookie is sent back to the server and the server can use the value to know that this request is part of an ongoing conversation between the server and that browser. The cookie is maintained until the session is ended by the browser being closed or the browser not making any further requests for a certain amount of time or a code to destroy the session is executed. The use of sessions is critical to the login process. This is because values can be stored into the session by the server and then read and or altered as the request response cycle, which we refer to as the conversation between the browser and the server occurs. In this activity, the first step is to add the code to create the session to the main ACME controller. Once added and saved, the controller is run. The home view should be delivered to the browser. The cookies can be reviewed and a session cookie named PHP sesh ID should be present. The same session creation code must be added to all controllers. Once done, it is absolutely critical that a strict implementation of the MVC be followed, meaning that views only direct requests to the controller, and the controller is completely responsible for delivering views. Views should never bypass the controller and go directly to another view. If this occurs, the session is lost because it is the controller that has the access to the existing session. Next, we will look at the login.php view and make sure of two things. First, that the correct method and actions are in the opening form tag. The method should be post and the action should point to the accounts controller and should use a full path from the site root. The second thing to check is that a hidden input exists in the form to tell the controller that a login process is being requested. Then, a new function is added to the account model.php file. This new function will query the database for a client record based on an email address. Each client's email should be unique as we have already implemented a check to make sure that no duplicates exist at the time of registration. If a record exists with the email being used, then a simple associative array containing the client data is returned. Finally, in the account controller, we do a number of things. First, we make sure that a case statement exists that will trigger when the name value pair from the login form is received. For example, action equals login. This login process follows the general process as most others in the controller. Namely, first, we filter and collect the data. Second, we check for missing data. Third, if missing data is found, we return to the previous view for correction. Fourth, if there are no errors, we process the data. Fifth, we check the results of the processing. And sixth, send a view to notify the browser of the result. In the controller, we use a combination of PHP functions and our own custom functions to collect and check the incoming email address and password. Next, a basic check is conducted, and if errors are present, an error message is set and returned to the view for correction. Third, we call our function to check if a record exists in the client's table 
with the email address that was submitted as a username. Fourth, we then use the PHP password verify function to check if the new password, after being hashed, matches the hashed password that already exists in the database. If the check fails, an error is generated and the login view is returned to inform the user of the failure. If the check is a success, then a flag, also referred to as an indicator, is set into the session indicating that the site visitor is logged in. The PHP array pop function is used to remove the last element, the password hash, from the client data array, and the array is then stored into the session where we can use it later if needed. Finally, a new view named admin.php is called to be returned to the browser. When run, this will result in an error since the admin.php view does not exist. The admin.php view will be created as part of the enhancement for this week. As you watched this video and saw the processes work, the thing you must realize is that being logged in is the end result of checking the registration data in the database against the new data being submitted. If the two match, then it is a matter of adding a simple flag to the session to indicate that logged in is true. If at any point the session is lost or destroyed or the flag is removed, the visitor is no longer logged in.